You're about to watch another exciting episode of The Dungeon Run, but did you know that you can actually be part of the adventure? Tune in live on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific time, and you can make your voice heard and help determine the fate of our adventurers. Hope to see you there. Adam Slemon, welcome to The Dungeon Run. This is your session zero, where we get to know more about your character, your backstory, who you are, uh, who you're playing. Mm. Um, so before we get into all of this, I would love to hear if uh, Cristobal were on his way to a lovely brunch with a friend of his. How would he be dressed? What would he look like? He is a very slight person. He's like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, he has olive complexion. His hair is perfect. Jet black goes down to about his shoulders. His finely trimmed goatee is the envy of anyone who could grow facial hair. <laughs> uh, again, his uh, clothing is uh, always immaculate, and he okay. always is with his cane, which he does not need to walk, but is a style accessory. It has a beautiful silver uh, handle in the shape of a crow, which mm -hmm. is the symbol of the uh, De La Cruz family. Right, and you're a noble. I am a noble. Okay. I was uh, born to the uh, court magician mm -hmm. of the Peron family, and uh, I have inherited that position. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has always come up in the court and has known a life of privilege mm -hmm. and of indulgence. Okay. Love it. Yeah. So uh, your hometown is Fasara, okay. which is a uh, agricultural town. Um, that has exploded. Uh, originally, it was, you know, only 500 people or so, but because of the outlying farmland uh, and the, the farming that's been happening there and the, the crops that have been getting grown and, and exported and imported, uh, the town can actually swell in size as those farmers and, and peasants will come into the castle. Uh, you spend all of your time inside the castle walls. You very rarely go outside to check on what's happening with the farms and the crops and what have you. The roads are made of dirt. I yes. will not walk on this. <laughs> this is true. You are used to cobblestone streets. <laughs> so speaking of cobblestone streets, it's, it's a nice, warm spring day. Uh, the, the harvest... Uh, of animals, because it's primarily livestock, uh, would normally be flooding the markets during this period of time. But there's a mysterious blight that has been passing through, and all of the swine, which is the Peron family's main commodity, uh, the bovine, which is another family's main commodity, and the avian uh, crops, have all been dying of this mysterious blight. Mm. And it's been weighing on you, especially, but it also was weighing on your father up until he passed away. Um, so you've been trying to piece that together. And you're walking down this cobblestone street uh, headed to the cafetorium. The cafetorium is where the middle class and the lower class dine. And normally they would dine on, um, you know... Uh, Tubers, veggies. Yes, yeah, like basic, boring peasant food. Potatoes, a yeah. lot of easy to yeah. grow. Very no meat. Yeah. Right, right. right. Yeah. Um, you are used to eating delicacies, but you're meeting a friend here. And mm -hmm. your friend is a kobold by the name of Diego. Diego Don Continua. Ah, and he's an old friend of yours. You, you guys have been friends for a long time. And he was even friends with your father as well. Uh, and his father was very good friends with your father. Uh, the kobolds in this town are, are known as the Garak. And they were actually imported from outside of town to help keep the peace. Uh, there were quite a few problems with thieves and bandits and and livestock theft, which is obviously not acceptable no. whatsoever. Yeah. Equivalent to murder. Yeah. 
So these kobolds have been imported and they form uh, essentially like a, a small military military organization called the Garak. And you are great friends with Diego. And obviously he can't come to court and dine with you. So you have brought yourself down to his level and you're eating at this cafetorium. You enter into the room. It's a long hall, uh, primarily stone with big wood benches. You're expecting someone to greet you and there's no one there, but you do see a lot of humans and kobolds dining at these various tables. And you spy from across the room, Diego, who's already sitting there and he waits for you to come. Crystal Ball! Crystal Ball, come, 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 friend! Diego! Uh, Crystal Ball throws his cape uh, over his shoulder to make sure everyone sees him stride confidently into the room and over to (laughs) Diego's chair. My good friend, it's been too long. It's very clear that no one expects someone of your nobility or, 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 or level of, of importance to be here. And so all eyes are looking on you. But Diego seems to take this in stride, not cool. unfamiliar with him. And he says, uh, and, and quickly gets up from his chair and uh, comes to you clo- closely and bows and says, um, good, good day, sir. I, I have a table for us if you would like to see it. Uh, yes, this is a beautiful place. Uh, I would like to dine most most definitely with you in this wonderful place. What do people eat here? Um, Just at that moment, there's actually, there's a couple servants walking around and uh, one of them comes up to you. It's a short, squat, male, Mm. bald head. Uh, Diego says, oh, you are so going to love this. Yeah, wearing a thick uh, jerkin. Hmm. Uh, Looks like it's made us like some kind of homespun wool. And he looks at you, kind of wide-eyed, looks over at your friend and nods. Uh, my lord, uh, it is so nice to see you uh, inside of the cafe. Uh, we weren't expecting anyone from the noble houses. That is fine. Just tell me your special, good man. I would uh, well, love to hear what you are serving today. Today, we have a very special, very special dish. Mm. Uh, it's so special that it is the only thing that we are serving. Today. It is delicious. It's a, a, oh. a brand new delicacy that uh, was recently uh, uh, um, created, actually, oh. by some of the, the wizards in the court. Oh, so Perhaps you know of it. Of, of course I do, yes. Uh, yeah. I had some just the other day. Oh, yes. so, so you are used to eating ooze. Yes, I love ooze. Uh, and he very uh, confidently like sticks his small chest out and uh, uh, ooze is uh, something that all great wizards dine on on a regular basis. Well, uh, we, we have been having so many problems getting in the different crops that we needed to pivot, as the lords say, to a, a commodity that was easier to grow. And we found that uh, gelatinous cubes and uh, oozes and slimes uh, grow very easily and you can feed them almost anything. Ah, very nutritious. Yes, oh. I've eaten it plenty of times. Gives me a lot of strength and energy. Oh, yes. that um. So, would you care for a small portion or a large portion? Bring ah. the noble a large portion. Yes, of course, of course. Yes, uh, with cream or with no cream? Of course, with cream. Only the best yes, for Mister yes, Bond. Of Ball. course, of course, of course. And he he takes a quick couple of awkward bows and. and meanders his way back to the kitchen. Tell me, Crystal Ball, how are you enjoying your new position? Uh, it is um, stressful. Uh, and he dusts the uh, chair off before he sits down into it. Um, but uh, rewarding. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Duke is very um, pleased so far with oh, my performance. It's good to hear. Yes. I was worried that such a quick transition to such power after your father passed would be difficult for you. It, um, well, uh, uh, a, a man must uh, step up and uh, yes. fill whatever shoes and are. you are quite a man. Thank you, Diego. <laughs> I have always valued our friendship. I also have valued our friendship greatly. I, I know you will do great things for this city and for them. Just know that the Garak are on your side. Thank you, my friend. Your lovely wife and daughter, they are so lucky to have you. Oh, thank you. Reven, Chargrindy, we miss you. Oh. You should come by sometime. Oh, yes. Uh, I would love to do that. Uh, I'm very busy, but uh, I'm sure we could find some time. Yes. Um, yes, I, I'm finding meat 
is harder and harder to, to get for my child. I thought maybe I could um, lean on you and the family a bit. Maybe get some special recommendation. Oh, some sort of permission to... You know, my lord, the finest oh. green ooze. Eh, it just came out very fresh. Uh, oh, please tell me when. It's very fresh. Uh, it, um... Continue! It's, Why are you oh, giving oh, it so little? It's, it's still jiggling, I noticed. Uh, is that how it... it how is you serve it? Here? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, thank you, yes. Think um, of it like tartar. Ah, tartar. Yes. And I'm yes. sure the taste will be very similar oh, as yeah. to that ooze I that cannot wait. have been... Um, thank you. Yes, <clears throat> yes, yes. Uh, please, if, if you require more... Oh, uh, uh, thank you. Okay. If you require more, do not hesitate to ask. Of course. I am Pierre. Pierre, it's a yes. pleasure to meet you. Thank uh, you, Pierre. <laughs> Please, enjoy. Oh. Enjoy. Yes, I, I, I certainly will. Oh, it's so good. It, oh. Uh, tell me, is this uh, the, the only uh, dining establishment that uh, you frequent? <clears throat> By order of your father. <clears throat> Aventurians make it easier to feed the populace. Well, Keep so everyone healthy and safe. Certainly. I just didn't know if maybe there was a smaller cafe where you could get something more um, <clears throat> universal. Pierre, this is so good. It's so <laughs> delicious. Uh, oh. I, I worked very hard on it. it, it, it I, have, I have extras. I have extras right here in, in case. Yes, of course. <laughs> My favorite parts are the, the chunks. The, yes, the, I know. Very, um, the very good... I've noticed that there's multiple colored chunks in the in the ooze. Is um is that uh, they are flavor packs and uh, <laughs> protein bombs? Yes. Protein bombs. You yes. put uh, protein bombs in the um. Crystal ball. Dig in. You are missing out on on your father's own greatest invention. <laughs> well, you know, father, he was always a man of the people, <laughs> and so as I will be. For crystal ball is known for um. Make a constitution check. I will very, yes, I will do this. <laughs> so, uh, D20 Barbarian. plus your constitution D20 set. D20 plus your fail. You failed yours already? Yep. What'd you get? Natural one! Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> is so, it not good? This is, um... It is delicious! Yeah, so... <laughs> so, uh, both of you are having a hard time keeping it, it down. It's not that it actually tastes that bad. It actually has, like, a... a, a a pretty uh, fruity flavor, <laughs> but say. it feels like sometimes it's trying to crawl back it's up It's the out texture, your throat. yeah. It's the texture that gets to you more so than anything. And when it's in your mouth, you get this feeling that maybe it's still kind of moving around. Yeah, like oh. it's not. It's jiggling, but it's also probably moving. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, it leaves the, the equivalent of like if you've ever seen people eat live squid or octopus. Yes, it's got that. very much like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> It leaves a, um... It, but would you like some more wine with your... <laughs> yes, 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 that would be yes, please, if uh. you wouldn't mind uh, some wine. <clears throat> uh, Thank you, I, I've, nice. I've noticed how fresh the ooze is. It tastes almost like, um... It, it, was, it was harvested this morning, that, actually. That uh, tracks. Yes, we, uh, find, yes. we, find, we find that the fresher, the Come better. better. Indeed. The fresher, mm. the better. No one my likes to eat all the ooze. My, my favorite parts are the protein bombs. Yes. Those are the best parts. I've noticed they are full of um, spices I have never experienced. Um, they, they seem... Um, it changes in flavor depending on what you feed the ooze. Mm. If you feed the ooze rocks, <clears throat> it tastes like minerals. Mm. If you feed the ooze uh, uh, plants... I, I, Pierre, did you... I, I believe this one maybe you fed um, a monkey, perhaps. Well, uh, the two... It's got a, um, a plantain <laughs> taste to it. While the two uh, men are talking, the kobolds are talking, yeah. I'm looking for like a dog or uh, anything that I could... No. This might be a small there, child there who looks be, hungry. Yeah, there might urchin. be other people that you could try to pawn it off yes. on if you want. Sure. Uh, <laughs> tell, I tell you what, why don't you give me a perception check, and if you if you beat it, the DC, then I'll, I'll let you do a sleight of hand to, to slink it off to someone. <laughs> Fifteen. Oh, okay. So yeah, sure enough, you see, 
there's some, you know, children that are that that they don't look like malnourished or anything. <laughs> they just look like they would eat anything if you put it in front of them. Children, children, come, please. Uh, this needs to be enjoyed by everyone, regardless of their age or. Oh well, I I can certainly get uh, smaller portions for the children as well. We have plenty in the back. But they just they look so so hungry right now. Uh. I thought maybe that they would enjoy if the, the freshest. Give me a persuasion. Diego seems to be completely unaware of what's going on and just in in this this loop. nine nine okay. Uh, the, Pierre wants to save face. Sure. So he he just kind of nods and and he you know accepts that perhaps his ooze isn't you know the the most delicious thing you've ever tasted. So he Pierre, this is so good. He he nods and says, "Well, oh, perhaps we, we will split it up and give it to the children." Yes, yes. to the children. All yes. all I do is. But for you should the come children. back tomorrow. We are going to have gelatinous cube, and it is completely different. It, 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 I would think it would be very similar. Yeah. <laughs> well, in texture, yes. you would be surprised yes. what you can do with an ooze. Oh, right? uh, oh, oh yes, uh, I must come back. I, I hope. Court does not keep me away. As you know, I'm very busy with yes. the, the yeah. crisis right now that is taking our town by right. storm. It's Speaking a, of, yes. as you say that, Pierre kind of like takes your blade and like cuts it up and hands it off to the kids. Uh, <laughs> Adam can eat as much of that as he wants, though. Oh, thanks, it's, sweet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, it's, it's actually really good. It's not, it's not bad at all. Um, so as Pierre takes your plate and chops it up and hands it away to the different kids that are there, you notice that there's a there was one man standing in the corner of the room uh, and it looked like he was almost like waiting to talk to you um, but it's very rude to in in this particular town in this culture it's very rude to interrupt someone while they're eating oh yeah so he waits until the food is split and uh, sorry I give you guys plastic where <laughs> I should have brought in real silverware where is the silver Jared yeah, yeah. um he waits until the food is removed and given to the kids mm-hmm. before he approaches. Uh, you've seen this gentleman before. His name is Rodrigo. And he's actually one of the court messengers. Ah. So if there's someone at the court that needs to either uh, get a message out to another member of the court, they can use one of these court messengers. But you've seen your father interact with Rodrigo several times before. He's he's a very svelte, but very well perfumed individual. Similar goatee to you, but much much longer hair that he has uh, braided with some uh, ribbons tied in his braids. Uh, his clothing is pretty uh, plain, especially in comparison to yours. But the, the ribbons in his hair give him a certain amount of um, flair. We'll say. <clears throat> he approaches you and bows and then just kind of sticks his nose in the air. And you see Diego kind of look him up. Diego. And you kind of look him, and Diego kind of looks him up and down uh, and then defers to you. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Rodrigo, it's, it's so brave of you to come here in such. Um, an interesting ensemble. You must know my good friend, uh, uh, Diego. Yes, yes, we are acquainted. Yes. Lord, well, we will say for now, court wizard, <clears throat> Cristobal. I have been... De la Cruz. De la Cruz. Thank you. Say the whole thing now. Um, yes, one, it's go. one, one. Lord, court wizard, Cristobal. Yes, yes, yes. I have been sent by the court on a very important uh, message. Oh, the court needs me! Ha! Huh, yes. Tell me more! I don't want to give away too much information in front of prying ears. Perhaps there is a place that we can speak that is more. Uh, Diego, Diego gets up from the table and says, I will take my leave from you, Count. Uh, Court wizard. (laughs) Uh, 
Is it, 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 I just want to make sure I'm not yeah. speaking out. It, it would be unusual for Diego, Diego to be around while court politics are being discussed or any court business. It depends on what it is. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, you, you are right. This is far too public a setting. Diego, perhaps you may show us to somewhere more private where the three of us may converse. Hey, certainly, we could take you to one of the Garak houses nearby. Excellent. Yes. Please follow me. Yes. The, the cape goes back over the shoulder. He's, he's, okay. As they're leaving, uh, Diego goes, Pierre, wonderful work on the ooze today. Oh, I cannot thank wait till tomorrow. Thank you. Yes, Pierre, uh, I will be back eventually. Yes. And he, he, he goes, I prepared some extra in case you want to take oh, it. Oh, yes, yes, I will <laughs> yes, take that. Yes. Thank you. Please, please. The wife will really enjoy this. <laughs> uh, so you guys cross the street, and sure enough, the Garak actually has an office right across the street, which uh, you would know. Mm-hmm. Um, and as soon as you enter into that room, uh, uh, Diego... Do you speak dr- dr- draconic at all? I do. Okay. Uh, you hear Diego when he walks in uh, say that they need a private room for right. the rooms. Yeah, and they clear out the office immediately. So there's really just a desk and a couple of chairs, and you see a map of the town with a couple of pins in it and some writing next to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can tell that there's a... Um, a nervousness to Rodrigo that you have yet to see before. And he waits to see if Diego is going to leave, and then when he realizes that Diego's not leaving, he goes, well, <coughs> I... I take the only chair in the room. Diego stands by the door like he's in the <laughs> car. Right. He nods. I was sent by the lords themselves. It seems an outsider has come to challenge your title as court wizard for the Perone family. Uh, A challenger? Uh, Do you know his name? Baron or Baron Medulan. Do I know Baron Medulan? You can roll history. You do know right off the bat that this is very unusual. Your the right. court jester or the court jester, excuse me, the court uh, wizard is an inher- an inherited role. Right. Uh, history, you said. Yeah. Uh, so I got a sixteen. Uh, you definitely heard of the Medulon family, mm. um, and it's strange. You know, right off the bat, it's strange because they're from Mechas. Mechus oh. is a very large, very prosperous, very technologically advanced city to the southwest. So to hear Medulon, that family name, spoken here in Fasarum is strange. And if his title is Baron, that's a very low <laughs> title for uh, uh, nobility. But if he's already a noble, uh, which technically court wizards are, are, aren't are necessarily noble because you're not necessarily born into it, although it is a hereditary role. Um, uh, it's strange that a lord from another land would want to take a position underneath a lord from a smaller town. That would be like if I was, you know, a lord in England and I wanted to go serve a lord in Ireland. It just... It just doesn't Nothing make against sense. Ireland. We love, we love <laughs> the Irish people. He's just talking about historically. Yeah, yeah, historically. No, I understand. Love I am Irish. Love Irish. Love Irish. <laughs> um, <Same. clears throat> uh, have I ever, has, was my father ever challenged? No. Do I know of any recent challenges to any of the court wizards I may have contact with? In your town? In Fasan? Yes. No. It is a thing that has happened in the sure. past, but very rare. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have to also imagine that these lords were essentially merchants two or three generations ago, and they declared themselves lords and ladies of Fasar. Sure. So there wasn't even necessarily a nobility or courtly wizards to challenge until now, really. Right. Yeah. Well, um... It when... seems he has quite a bit of... Ooh. amongst the court. Well, when this baron arrives, uh, he I He's will... already here. He has been here for two days. He has been here for two days? Yes. Why was not I told earlier, Rodrigo? 
because he just announced today in court that he was challenging me. He says that, and I quote, your family is weak and is no longer suited for the position. Tell him that I will accept his challenge and um, forthwith uh, find him on the dueling run. He has chosen tomorrow as the day of the duel. Tomorrow? Yes. <clears throat> when the sun rises. Then, then... Because he has declared the time, and because he has declared the challenge, you are allowed to declare what it is to. Whether it is <clears throat> to the first blood, until someone yields, or until death. <clears throat> it will be uh, La Destreza to the first blood. As you wish. Is there anything else that you need of me? No, you may go. Uh, Diego opens the door. Thank you. And good luck. And he doesn't say that with any level of sarcasm whatsoever. Like he is legitimately right. wishing <clears throat> And he turns, clicks his heel, turns, pivots, and walks up. <clears throat> Diego closes the door. How long has this Baron been in town, and why am I only just hearing about I it now? I don't know. I have not. It's news to me as well. The Garak have no understanding or knowledge of this, I promise you. This is a this is a big deal. This is a powerful family. I don't know of the family. Where are they from? The Mechas. Why would a Baron from Mechas want to challenge you? I don't, I do not know. A true father had a, a, a fantastic reputation, but he did not stretch that far, not by any means. You've been in the position for two weeks. How is your relationship with the, 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 the swine lords? Well, I mean, well enough. It is not um, as established as I would prefer to Christobal, be. Christobal, what are you keeping from me? It is true that they may not have... Um, seen much of me prior to uh, my father's uh, passing. I uh, tended to uh, frequent uh, various social gatherings as opposed to <coughs> judicial services that the lords usually um, would like me to be at. Your father's death caught us all off guard. Yes, it did. Sorry, you are having to deal with this. I will... Find what I can from the Garak on this <coughs> Baron Medulon. But Crystal Ball. Diego, speak plainly. We have known each other too long. Your father knows my father, and so forth. There is... No, we kobolds trust our gut. I do not think that the first blood is going to be enough. If he is a wizard of honor, then he will respect the uh, terms at which I have laid out. You are, you are more knowledgeable on the matters of court than I. However, the, Diego, if you and your Iraq might um, be close by during the event, I am sure always. I would appreciate your support. I will bring my finest warriors, <coughs> sir. Thank you. <clears throat> um, now, if you will excuse me, I must um, prepare. prepare. Would you like to take some of the ooze with you? <laughs> it will energize you for your battle. It would not be fair to take the ooze and have such an advantage over the Baron. Uh, you are an honorable man. <laughs> yes, yes, I have extra whipped cream. <laughs> it's very, very thoughtful of you. Yeah. Well, I wish you luck, and I will be there if you Thank you, Theo. Uh, he opens the door, yep. stands at attention, and bounces you. I mean, I mean uh, Cristobal would never run, but he is going to be walking expeditiously. Sure. Uh, to I mean, you could hire someone <coughs> to, like a carriage or someone, to take you where you need to go. Oh yes, like, definitely. Okay. I'm just going to stand there with my hand out. <laughs> uh, and, and Diego goes around the back of the uh, of the Garak building and comes out with what is a a, a, a a cobalt who's driving a horse and carriage. Ah, excellent, yeah. sir! I must. I need to get to court. In post test, please. Oh, you want to go to court? I, I want to go yes, sir. immediately to. Oh, sir, uh, you don't want to go home. You want to go to court? Yes, I want. Okay. Yeah, sure. I want to go talk to the Don about this. Sure. Yes, yes. Sure. So jumping so in. So you want to talk to the head of the Perone family? Yes. Okay. Make a perception check as you're leaving on the carriage. <clears throat> 
that's not great. Uh, nine. There seem to be a couple of kobolds and various uh, individuals in the street um, that seem to be caught off guard by the horse carriage as you come through uh, at, at its speed, because you indicate that it wants to travel fast. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm waving, I'm acknowledging, I'm... Uh, I, I, I try to throw. I do, I'm out of money. Otherwise, I would. <laughs> I would. I would be throwing money to the uh, the kobolds. Um, okay. So yeah. you ride this carriage. You go straight to court. I will say court's not in session right, right now. Okay. So as far as like there being a lot of people there, there's a few here and there. But you're gonna have to like actively search if you want to find somebody from the Perrin family. <clears throat> yes, and uh, I will be searching uh, specifically for sure. the pit, dumb pit of clothes. Sure. So give me. Uh, you want, you're trying to find the head of the family. Yes. Okay. Uh, perception. Yikes! I am just. I'm. Not, well, that makes sense. He's not very perceptive, is he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, seven. So. You try to go to uh, where his uh, office essentially is. He's not there. You go to where he likes to drink and have cigars. He's not there. Uh, you even go to where he might be if he was going to be uh, attending someone in a more formal manner, just in case if he's actually conversing with this uh, Baron Medellin. Mm. Um, and you just cannot find him. However, you do see... Uh, his wife, Maria Eva Duerte de Perón. Very good. <laughs> <They're> practicing. <laughs> um, Spanish is not my strong suit. Uh, when Jared so, found out I was playing a Castilian, he just <laughs> sighed with joy. It was just a... Yeah, so much joy. <laughs> Lots of joy. Um, so she is actually being uh, attended by some of her ladies in waiting, I would say. And, um, and it looks like she's trying on a couple new dresses and the newest hairstyle that recently came out of Aurelius, Love it. which is much more, instead of the, the fashion of Fasarum, uh, uh, which is sleek and down with flowers, uh, Aurelius is much more up and curled and filled with uh, ostentatious um, uh, uh, feathers. If you didn't know better as a wizard, you might even think there was a little bit of magic sure. mixed in sure. with the hairdo. <clears throat> she she looks over and she notices you. Oh, Cristobal. Uh, uh, what brings you here? First of all, your beauty uh, would draw the very sun from the sky. Uh, you're, you're, you're too kind. And uh, such beautiful... Um, uh, ladies in waiting, of course, will draw my eye just as quickly. And they all, it's very much like a giggle kind of situation. And, and they, a lot of them seem to be very uh, interested in who you are. And, and, and obviously, yeah, you, you could actually marry a lady. Yeah, one of these individuals would be an yeah. equivalent nobility of yours, for yeah. sure. Uh, uh, and there's also kind of, some handmaids there <laughs> as well. And uh, they kind of, uh, they take a back seat. They kind of move away and let you both sure. have uh, I turn out my calf as best as possible to really make sure <laughs> they see what, what I'm working with. Yeah. Um, uh, real quick, if I'm to refer to, because he is a lord, would I refer to her as a lordess or a sure. countess or? Uh, I, I think, I think whatever you like to call her is fine because if we start getting into like all the different right, there's so titles, many. It, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. super complicated. And this, as we have indicated before, the, the lordly nature of this city is fairly it's new. made up. Understood. Right. Yeah, understood. In fact, if you said lordess, I think that would be completely fine. Right, uh, my lordess. Uh, I have to uh, tell you about a very <laughs> strange occurrence that just occurred. That just occurred. Um, is this about the strange man? Uh, yes, the Baron uh, from Megas. Yes. Yes. He, Medulon. Yes. Uh, do you yes. know the family? Uh, I am acquainted. Yes, well, he has challenged me for the position of court wizard, which of course is yes, a Yes, I, I know. He came to us first and asked for permission. And you did not think to warn me? I did not think it would happen so quickly. Ah, I see. I see that you have already received the challenge. Yes, uh... Rico uh, presented it to me just moments ago. I see. And when is the date? On the morrow. On the morrow? On the morrow, at the first light. So soon? So soon. Surely you need <coughs> more time to prepare. Uh, 
You could I request a, a, a stay. No, 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 I, I would never. Uh, if I am going to embarrass this Baron, I prefer to be merciful and get it over quickly. I would never I dream to um, cause a... Uh, well, I'm sure if you have any of the skills that your father had, this challenge will not be much of one. No, it will not. It will be uh, quite simple. I just wanted to make sure that my lady was aware that um, during these duels, though this is just to the first blood, they can be a bit um, vigorous, and I didn't want you or any of your lovely ladies to be... Uh... How can I say this? Do you uh... not wish for me to attend? No, 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 no. I just want you to be aware so that you are not struck down by the prowess that you see on the um, visiting court. Ah, well, we will be above, of course. Yes. And you will be down in the, the dueling arena. Yes, yes, but I find that oftentimes a beautiful young lady such as yourselves will lean forward in such anticipation they may ah, fall yes. from the boxes. Then well, I want to make I sure that... I'm not as young... Uh, I'm not a young spring chicken like I once was. <laughs> the ladies the ladies me like, no, no, of course no, you are! <laughs> absolutely! You're the, you're the beautiful, most <laughs> pretty and beautiful! Ah... <laughs> uh, my lady, I will not take any more of your time, although this, all of this, is working. Yes. Just so you know. Thank you. It's, a, it's the newest style out of Aurelius. I, I thought perhaps it was too much. No, no, no. You are a summer, and all that you do makes the flowers bloom. Ah, that is very sweet. Of course. You have your father's tongue, that is for sure. <laughs> I have been told. <laughs> And he, and he nods at the, the women and does one of these again, turns the calf out. Yep, yep. They whisper uh, amongst themselves. No, if, if you will excuse me. She leans over and whispers something into one of the women's uh, ears, one of her lady in waiting. She, and, and she quickly whispers. I have something that I wish to give. A gift. It may it bring you good luck in the duel. You, you honor me, my lady. Yes, it will just be a moment. Okay, of uh, and the, the handmaiden comes back uh, carrying what looks like a, a platter with a with a uh, velvet uh, blanket over the top of it. Please. Uh, and he goes and he removes the velvet. As you remove it, it's this beautiful, ornate, brass and silver hand mirror. I mean, it's it's breathtaking. The craftsmanship and it's and it's brass, so someone had to take a lot of time yeah. to sculpt this without any real imperfections. The back side of the hand mirror is a darker brass melded with a lighter brass, and it looks like um, like a cityscape. Wow. And uh, you don't recognize the city. Uh, you're just glancing at it at first. <laughs> Um, but you do see the symbology amongst the the different colored brass implements. So go ahead and give me a Arcana or history. Um, probably Arcana. Right? Yeah, probably Arcana would work or yeah. history, whichever. They're better. both. They're both the same. Okay. And the front side of the mirror is a hand pounded uh, plate of silver. So wow. it's actual Perfectly silver. Round. Wow. Yeah. So it's uh, an eleven. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, so you you recognize the symbology as being a mirror of Lumbra. And Lumbra is actually a, a god. Not a heavily worshipped god, but this is obviously an older item. Mm. Uh, maybe back when Lumbra uh, had not fallen so far from grace. But Lumbra is the god of civilization. And it was very popular. Uh, this was you know, a generation or two ago to give gifts of Lumbra, especially if you are from an aristocratic, uh, noble upbringing. So you would give a gift of Lumbra if you were going to get married, or you would uh, give a gift of Lumbra if you were going to receive a, a, a title or... Um, As an occasion for anything civil. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Great. So it, it's, a, it's a sign of... Um, Back in the day, it was a sign of respect, growth, and prosperity. And ah. it still is. It's just old school. Sure. I am, I immediately, uh, you know, bow and uh, subjugate myself and say, My lady, I am. This is a great honor that you would present such a thing to me. That, that you would bless me with such a, a perfect emblem. I, I, I am speechless, which is... 
rare. Oh. I was thinking that uh, I could keep it for myself, but it has so many masculine qualities to it. So I thought perhaps who better to give it to than someone who takes good care of themselves. Thank and she gestures towards your hair and your outfit. That, you speak too kindly, my lady. And uh, the other ladies begin to clap. Yeah. And, and, and now I'm, I'm afraid I must prepare if we're going to be joining tomorrow. Of course. Of uh, course. Yes, I must go and try on one of my older gowns. Oh. I was thinking the blue. What do we and she starts to just walk away. And one of the handmaidens comes to you and, and, and begins to show you out. Yeah, sure, and I... I take the. I'm given the mirror. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, it's wrapped in like a nice uh, velvet cloth. Velvet cloth. And and uh, I imagine like the door shuts behind, and he's just kind of standing there. <laughs> um, and in the dressing room. In the yeah, yeah. and he, he you know he takes in one side of his face, careful not to look directly into the mirror, straight on, but yeah. uh, making sure that Make his a perception check. Ninety one. <laughs> <laughs> you look rolled, amazing. Everybody rolled terrible in their session zero, yeah. except for Carrie. Carrie, Carrie rolled well. Yeah. So this is par for the course. Um, uh, and you yeah. look amazing in this mirror. Of course I do. Yeah. No doubts. Yeah. Um, at this point, uh, I am going to. It's getting late. Yeah. And I am. I notice like the sun, and I'm yeah. like, Ugh, and I like yeah. take off. And you haven't like, prepared anything at all. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have. Whoosh. You have the spells that you normally have on you for court. Right. Not for battle. Right. Right. Okay, so you rush home. Uh, and as you get home, you kind of uh, bust into your little villa and you're you're picking all of your things apart, looking to see what am I going to wear, what am I going to use, you know, that kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. Yes. How would you like to prepare? You have essentially, we'll, we'll skip ahead in time. Sure. But you have from now until early the next morning before you'd have to appear in court. So, having never fought a wizard's duel, and right. knowing that my father has, yeah. I'm going through all of my father's old things, looking for any books, scrolls, right. implements uh, that would, like, because, again, I've had a very uh, academic experience right. wizard, never combative. Right. So, he's looking for anything that will give yeah. him an edge. And your dad only really had to deal with a few altercations in his career, and they were primarily before you were of age. Right, yeah. So you don't even really know what what he had to deal with when he was young. He didn't really talk too much about his upbringing. Sure. Uh, go ahead and give me investigation. Okay. Six! <laughs> Got me a six! Wow. So the most you can come up with is you find, you, you're going through your dad's old uh, uh, spell book mm. and most of those spells you already know, mm. but you realize that a couple of these spells, even though you know them, are written out in scroll form. So you could cast a spell from the the book itself, as if it was a scroll. It would use it up, but you already know the spell's already in your book. So you essentially find a couple scrolls from spells that you already know. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh that's the best you can come up with, and it gets it's late. Okay. There is a little information that you find about the general function of how a wizard's duel is supposed True. to work, yeah. and that part is basically it's very you get a turn to cast a spell, mm. I get a turn to cast right. a spell, you get a turn, and the last one who last one up who is either not run out of spells or is not but conscious. He, he chose uh, first blood. He, right, right. So it is typically be, yes. Yeah. I mean, what you find is typically those are the kind of things is. When you run out, you have chosen a different, uh, a different one, which of course you know is the first one to draw blood. Okay. Right. So it's going to be all about who's the quickest on the draw. Got it. Yeah. Um, which you have no idea who this man is or what he's really capable of. Sure. Uh, you try to sleep. You do your best, but you toss and turn and. And you're just trying to think of a, of a game plan of what you're going to do in this duel. And the morning comes before you're ready. Sure. Uh, you put on, you know, your your best clothes. You know, you you put together your, your satchel with, you know, as many belongings as you think you could possibly need. Um, but before you're ready or confident, there's a knock at the door. Uh, 
uh, you know, uh, hair, hand through the hair, uh, quickly come to the, uh... It's Roderick. Oh. He is ready and waiting. Lead on! He clicks his heels and starts leading you through, uh, the city. As he's leading you through the city, you don't live that far away from court, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to get in the carriage and do all of that. How about just to go over there? Although, I don't know, if, if you want to... Uh, no, no, at this point, he's viewing himself as the people's champion. Okay. So he's he's hoping that he's going to be walking through the streets yeah. and there's going to be palm fronds. No. And, no, okay. No, there's, a, there's, there's very few people. It is an agricultural town. It's early in the morning, so there are people that are there that are kind of milling about, but they're doing their work. Okay. Yeah, Fair. they're not... Nobody even knows that this duel is even happening. It wasn't announced. Right, right. In fact, it was very private, the fact that he said it the way... And it wasn't even done in court, which is strange, right. too. All of this is There's not, all these yeah. red flags that are popping up in your head when you arrive at court. And when you arrive at court, you notice there's a lot of people missing. This was not put out on the general wire. Okay. So you see the head, heads of the Perron family... You see a couple representatives from the other lords' families, but not the actual heads. Okay. And you see a lot of the, we'll call them, low-ranking fodder of the noble court that are there because this is sort of juicy gossip. Sure. No matter what happens, it's going to be juicy. A lot of the lower noble nobility that are trying to climb the ladder yeah, exactly. seem to be here. Yeah. Uh, and at first, you don't see whoever this Baron Medellon man is. Uh, but then as the crowd parts and you sort of enter the dueling ring, which is more of a square than a ring, and there's two corners that are marked. And primarily it's done with swords uh, and fencing, not with magic. Uh, but in your instance, it's going to be done with magic. And so a lot of the people are actually clearing out and going to the upper levels because they don't want to get hit by a stray spell, which sure. makes sense. Uh, but Baron Metalon is a tall, very tall, we're talking 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, super thin, very gaunt, gray hair. He looks like he, he could be in his 50s or 60s. Older than even the father. Yeah, which is also strange for someone that yeah. would be trying to climb into a different uh, social... Uh, um, Aristocracy. Sure. Um, very regal, but gaunt. His clothes are not ostentatious, ost ostentatious at all. It's drab. We're talking grays and blacks, and maybe uh, one white handkerchief uh, poking up out of his pocket. Um, go ahead and give me a perception check. Hopefully, you get I'm gonna roll a different die. I was gonna say, <laughs> I'm gonna roll a different die. I'm gonna do on this one. Okay, okay, that's uh, the 13. Okay. He's staring daggers at you, and you notice big bags underneath his eyes, and he's got these dull gray eyes um, that almost look like, a, like an overcast sky. You do notice that there are two figures standing behind him that look like they're acting as his seconds, which is normally something that would only be the case if it was a martial duel, right. but this is a magic duel, and both of those figures are short and hooded, and as you look at them, they flip their hoods back, and it's two kobolds that you don't recognize. They don't look like they're from the Garag, but they are kobolds, and they're probably from the Vaglira Woods, which is not far from uh, Fasarum, where you're from. And as you are noticing this, you hear a little bit of a commotion behind you from when you came in. And sure enough, you see Diego uh, in his armor, wearing a shield, uh, clearly breathing very heavily as if he's been running. A, 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 and he, <laughs> I, I'm glad I got here in time. Thank you. Prepare yourself, Cristobal. He is a necromancer. And as he says that, he brings his hand up and he's got a, both of his hands are gloved, but the hand that he brings up has six fingers on it. Uh, and the... Um, and it's large. And it is Rodrigo in the center of the arena who begins to clap to get everyone's attention uh, and and looks to uh, the Baron 
asking if, uh, nodding and seeing if he is ready for the duel. There's a small flame that starts to lick the inside of his hands, and it's a bluish white flame. And as he's staring at you, he just snuffs it out, and he never moves. Uh, Rodrigo, taking that as an indication that he is ready, turns <laughs> to you uh, and also looks for your indication that you're ready for the duel. Uh, I will <clears throat> uh, make sure that Diego's over my shoulder, look up at the Perones to make sure they really want this to go down. You notice that uh, uh, Maria mm. takes out her very nice handkerchief, placed a little embroidery on it, mm-hmm. and it's like a, a bright pink that's matching her entire outfit, and she just lets it go from the top balcony, and it floats down slowly and lands maybe two, three feet away from you. And as soon as it hits the ground, Rodrigo indicates, do it! Baron Mendelon brings his hand back and starts casting his spell. What what are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. Uh, So he is casting a spell. Um, I'm. Well, we're going to roll initiative. Right, right, I just so want to know what you're doing. So, all right, so yeah. he's going to go from the uh, looking at the handkerchief. He looks up, he sees the spell is starting to be cast, right. and he immediately brings his, his cane up and strikes an elegant pose and uh, does a quick sachet to the left, sachet to the right, and brings it up again. In okay. a, it looks like it's a fencing stance, but it's got the... Right, so you start doing a dance, yep. essentially. Yes, okay. he Great. starts moving. Great. Yep. Roll initiative. Oh, boy. Dirty 20. Uh, you get him. Uh, uh, oh, I already have not. Why am I doing that? Um, yeah, he's only got a 13, so you get to you get to do the first move. Sweet. You're approximately 30 feet 30 feet from each other. Great. Uh, my first move um, is going to be to cast mirror image. Okay. So there's now three. There's now right? three of me. Yeah. And they're all still moving in the same. Dancing. Uh, yeah. Yes. Great. Um, and he's going to. Uh, so that's your action. Yes, that's my action. Okay. Uh, he's going to keep his distance. Uh, Cristobal is going to uh, gesture to the crowd and say, uh, prepare for uh, entertainment like you've never seen. Um, and his, with his. Uh, mo- his movement, he's again, he's just going to be uh, dancing back and forth. Uh, his bonus action is going to be activating uh, Blade Song. Okay. So, your Blade Song, just for everybody watching, is more of a dance yes. than it is singing. Yes, it is uh, very uh, elegant, long strides. Uh, think of it like an Argentinian tango with its okay. uh, long extensions Great. and uh, grace. Great. So you're doing this dance, and uh, you can tell that Baron Medellin is confused at first. Like he was expecting you to attack him, mm-hmm. especially because you had the drop on him. And when you don't, he seems angered or frustrated by that. He grits his teeth. And as he grits his teeth, you notice a tiny bit of blood starting to trickle out of his mouth. And he has this spell held up in his hand. It's this blue flame. But instead of casting it, he reaches back and places his hand on one of the two kobolds. And you notice that the kobold screams in pain. Its flesh peels away from its bone and it crumbles to ash and just collapses, the robe collapses on the ground. The other kobold standing right next to him gets this panicked look on his face and the Baron unleashes this blue bolt at you, Mm. but then immediately casts another spell. And that spell creates a cloud of darkness around you, around the Baron, and around the two kobolds, your kobold and his remaining kobold. You've never seen a wizard in all your time, including your father, mm. cast two difficult spells, not cantrips, right. but two difficult spells at the same time. As an academic, this is theoretically impossible. Yeah, yeah. this is impossible. Yeah. Yeah. The blue flame shoots down at your feet. You can go ahead and make a dex save. Uh, in addition, you can hear the those that are in the arena begin to Gasp, gasp and, yeah. and, and make noises of, of panic and, and not understanding what's going on. Uh, 12. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's not going to do it. 
Um, so blue flame hits your feet and erupts around you. It's a fireball spell, but it's doing uh, necro- uh, necrotic damage as opposed to fire damage. And you can feel almost as if your soul is being sucked out of you. Like it's being drawn down into the blue flames. Like when you burn wood. Sure. And when it burns, like a match, for example, it it lights up and then that heat starts to draw the wood into a blackened state uh, towards the center of it on a torch. Mm -hmm. Very similar to but your soul. And he does not hit my my illusions at all. He comes straight out. It does not appear. It hits, it hits the illusions and right. you. Oh, the, it's, an, it's yeah, an area. Yeah, area yeah, it's a big area. Got it. It's also really hard for you to see him now because you're surrounded and blinded sure, by darkness. Sure, yeah. Uh, and you do not make your save, so uh, it does 19 points of damage. Oh! <laughs> um, and, and it has a secondary effect that's going to do more damage on the next round. So you know you only have a little bit of time before this is over, the, before you're gone. The the dirt in the arena around your feet is still flaming with blue yeah. flame. That's uh, hot. Uh, it's your turn. Great. However, I will say this. As you're standing there and wreathed in these blue flames that are licking up around you, the uh, your front breast pocket begins to shake and and warm and you realize that the mirror that she gave you is slightly hum is starting to hum and it feels like it's 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 being activated or, or calling out to you make a uh, make a insight or investigation I was gonna say arcana arcana yeah make that works too arcana 18. It is very clear to you that this magic or this fire, specifically this blue flame that he has cast, has activated that mirror in some way. You also can tell that your friend, because you can hear him screaming in pain, is inside of this circle of flame too. Even though you can't see him because the darkness spell is being cast. You just hear the screams and see the flame and you feel the mirror in your pocket begin to vibrate. Sure. So he is not in a good physical place um, (laughs) at all. Uh, He is going to take his uh, his cane and movement abandoned. He is going to draw the sword from it and hobble towards um, uh, the Baron. It's almost like his life is being drained into the floor with each step, but he's dedicated to at least making it to the Baron. And uh, uh, he takes, he, he feels the mirror vibrating, so he pulls it from his pocket and he holds it up to him and says, you will see your own death. And uh, he lunges with his rapier. Okay. So you're not exactly sure where he's at because you're in a cloud of darkness, but you step out of the cloud of darkness and you see him still standing where he was on the edge of the dueling arena. Mm -hmm. He has his hand on the other kobold and that kobold collapses to the ground, doesn't lose all of its flesh and skin, it just collapses to the ground, you're assuming dead, because it's trembling and not moving. And he glances back and he almost seems somewhat surprised that you are emerging from the shadow and saying this threat. Mm. Uh, And he begins to wave his hand up and down at you. But as he does so, he brings it up and across And you can see blue flame lick up towards the lords and the ladies that are in the upper balcony. They scream and start to run for cover and the whole arena starts to burn with this blue flame as he brings it down on top of you and you stab forward. Just as you're about to stab him, you're holding this mirror at the same time. The blue flame hits the mirror exactly and all of the blue flame that he shot up into the sky and towards you begins to get siphoned and sucked into the reflective surface of your mirror and it shakes and vibrates and grows to and you're still you trying to push forward anymore. yeah you're mm-hmm. still trying to push forward with this rape here but something is slowing you down something is holding you back and you glance back and you see there's actual black tendrils coming from the shadows that are holding on to your body and your arm they begin to get sucked into the mirror over your shoulder, across your body, and they envelop you again until you look down, the mirror lands on the ground with a thud, 
and you and all of your belongings get sucked into the mirror itself, and that is the end of your session zero. Oh, I knew <laughs> you were gonna. Oh, awesome. 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 Welcome. Well, welcome. Thank you guys. Well that was that yeah. was fantastic. Did you enjoy your This is actually really it good. Is, it was yeah. really good. I <laughs> ate look, I just want yeah. to be clear. Like I ate most of this. Yeah. Like here, just compare those two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's Crystal Ball it was, was, was amazing. Was not a fan, but Adam was. Uh, and the protein bombs were bananas, which yeah, I, I very I like much that. enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> protein bombs are it was a nice touch. Hmm. Oh. Guys, this was a fantastic experience. Welcome, so Crystal much. Ball. Yeah. To the team. Thank you so much, guys. It started. It started. It started. 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 As a simple dungeon run. As a simple dungeon run.